If you've ever started building a project but failed to finish it, or had an idea for a project but just didn't know where to start, this is the video for you. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how you can plan out a large project. When you're learning how to code, you're building up things like to-do applications, weather apps, things that are small enough you can build them in a few hours or a couple of days, and it really doesn't take very much planning to build them because, well, if you mess up, you're not really wasting a bunch of time going back and fixing things. It'll take you just a few minutes or hours to fix. But when you're working on a large scale project that takes weeks, months, or even years to build, if you realize halfway through the project you did something completely wrong, it's going to take you tons of time to fix, and generally it just leads to people quitting projects because the amount of effort it takes to fix those problems is too large and not worth it to finish the project out. So I want to give you some tips that you can use to be able to plan out larger projects and make sure you don't run into these roadblocks that cause most people to quit. And the number one most important thing when it comes to planning out a project is not what language you use, not what tech stack you use. It is entirely based on what the problem is that you're solving and how you're going to solve it. So take, for example, someone wanting to build out a site for statistics for a video game. Let's say they're playing a video game and they want to learn more about the statistics of the game themselves, like how they're playing and so on so they can improve. And the stats in the game itself aren't good enough. Well, the thing that they're going to build is going to be an application that shows them these statistics. But if they know the reason they're building the site, for example, they want to get better at a particular part of that game, maybe they're going to focus the site on showing statistics for that particular part of the game. For me, I actually recently started a pretty large project on trying to build a virtual career fair system for self-taught developers. And the reason that I decided to build this was there was a problem that self-taught developers don't really have access to career fairs and career fairs are one of the best ways to land a job. So I wanted to create a platform that allowed self-taught developers to be able to have access to career fairs, which are amazing for landing jobs. So this is my problem I'm trying to solve, and my solution is going to be an online career fair for self-taught developers, or really any developer, but it's specifically to help self-taught developers. So now that I kind of know what the problem is, and I know what the solution I'm trying to build to that problem is, then you can think about, okay, how am I going to build that solution? And before you even think about any lines of code or anything like that, you want to think through what your solution needs. What are the problems that you're going to encounter? For example, in my solution, I'm going to need to have some type of database to store information for the career fair stuff, to store information for users. I'll need some type of video chat program so that I can have people talk to each other just like it was a normal career fair, but in the virtual format. I need a way to accept payments for companies to pay for the career fair. I need to have authentication. I need to have all these different components. So knowing the different components you need is gonna really help when it comes to figuring out your technology stack. In the video game example, you're probably going to have to access some API, so you're going to have an API. You're probably going to have a database where you're going to store the analytics that you need to be able to compute from the data you get from the API, and then you possibly need to have some kind of authentication system to authenticate the users. So depending on the project you have, you're going to have different requirements, and understanding those requirements is crucial to making sure you build out your application correctly the first time. Now once you understand what the different things your application is built off of, the next thing that you need to focus on is going to be the technology stack that you're going to use. And for the most part, this really doesn't matter much at all. Most people think, okay, I need to make sure that my application is going to be super efficient, super performant, and can handle 1 million users every 10 seconds to my application. But in reality, 99.999% of applications you build aren't going to have a huge load on them with millions of users at a time. You're going to have hundreds, maybe thousands of users using your site at the same time, but you're never really going to get to the point where you have tens, hundreds, or even millions of users using your site. And if you ever get to that point with your site, it doesn't really matter what you built it with to begin with, because most likely you're going to have to change things to work with performance. Because when you get to millions of active users at the same time, the performance concerns you have are so much different than when you first build out your application. So honestly, my best advice when it comes to technology stack is choose what you're comfortable with. Choose the stack that you know the best, even if it's not the most performant or the most perfect for the situation, it's almost always going to be better for you because it's what you understand, it's what you know, and it means you're going to be able to build better and quicker programs using those tools. The other option is to build a technology stack that you're less familiar with, and the only reason I would recommend this is if you actually want to learn that technology stack as you're building the project. One downside you have to watch out for though is if you do this, it's going to take you much longer to build a project and it most likely means you're going to end up rewriting things as you go and that's just because you're going to run into problems that you didn't really know about because you didn't understand the technology stack right away. 
This is actually something I am running into with building this career fair site. I decided to build it using Next.js and TypeScript, which are two things I really have not used much before at all. So it's been new experiences for me to try to build this out. And the first kind of iteration that I built of the site was really rough. It was really bad. There was a lot of things I just did wrong with TypeScript and Next. And I ended up kind of scratching the whole thing and rewriting it in a much more efficient and better way. But the only reason I had to do that rewrite was because of my misunderstandings of Next and TypeScript. If I had built this in something like Ruby or Node.js with Express, it would have been something I'm super familiar in already. And I would have been able to just crank through it no problem without having to do any of these refactors throughout the way. And I would have had it done way sooner. But I wanted to use this project as a way to learn Next and TypeScript so I can teach it to you. So that is the reason I ended up going with this newer technology I'm less familiar with. Now, it's pretty crazy to think that up to this point, we haven't even talked about writing a single line of code, but that just goes to show how important it is to start planning all these things in advance. Now, when it comes time to start writing the code, there are other things you need to take into consideration to make sure the project goes smoothly and keeps on time and on track. And the most important thing to think about is what is the MVP of your project, the minimum viable product? Essentially, what is the smallest thing you can build to achieve the most amount of what you want? You wanna figure out what features can I cut? Let's say that you want to build out a ton of different features, well which ones do you need now and which can come later? For example, when it comes to this video game analytics example I've been talking about, what is the most important analytic for you to understand? Make that your MVP. And then your other analytics that you don't care about as much, don't worry about them. And if you're building a project for you at first, don't even bother with authentication. Just hard code your own account into it because you're the only one that's going to be using it right away and then you can add authentication later. Same thing with like password resets if you have authentication. Who really cares about password reset? Throw that in later, make it a manual process. If someone wants to reset their password, have them email you and you'll manually reset it for them. But that's not something you need to worry about coding out right away. One perfect example of that in the project I'm working on is when you go to a career fair and you want to view the different jobs and companies that are gonna be there before the career fair starts, I thought it'd be great for people to be able to favorite the different careers and jobs that they're interested in. But that's an extra feature that, while useful, is not core to the actual functionality of the career fair. The important part is that companies are there, people are there, and that they can talk to each other about a job. Nothing else matters until I get that feature built. So figure out what your core feature is and focus all your efforts on building out that feature first, and then the extra stuff can come later. So now that you've figured out what your core set of features are, your next step is to break those down into individual small tasks. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned you're probably used to building small things like weather apps and to-do applications. What I want you to do is I want you to take your core features and break it down into small enough tasks that it would take you about the same amount of time to build these tasks as it would to build a weather app or a to-do app or something along those lines. Small tasks that take a couple days at most, maybe a week long at most, but generally try to keep them even shorter, maybe a few hours or half a day or one day of time to build out these features. This would be something like, you know, take the authentication and login section of a site. Let's just break it out so that we can have like a sign up portion. Okay, I built the sign up portion. Now let's build the login portion as a different task. And now we're going to build, you know, the forgot password as a different task if that's part of your core components. For my career fair website, the main thing that I focused on at first was the authentication workflow. I got that working. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to work on the user profile now. So I worked on a way to be able to edit and update and create a profile. And I also worked on a way to be able to view that profile. And then I was like, okay, now I need to be able to do job listings. So I worked on creating a form for job listings and a way to view job listings. And then I was like, okay, now I need to work on the next thing, which is going to be like video chatting and so on. So if you break them into smaller tasks, it becomes much easier to be like, okay, I've completed this thing and this thing and this thing. And it feels good because it feels like you're building a bunch of different projects. When in reality, you're just building a few small stepping stones to one larger project. Now, once you get all of the tasks for your MVP done, you've essentially got far enough that you've built out your project. The MVP of your project is essentially your project. It is complete, it is now usable. You can show it to people, you can have them use it, you can get feedback, and you can figure out what are your next features you wanna build. Maybe some of the features you thought were important aren't important at all. And maybe some things you never even thought of are what you need to add to the application. And at this point, you pretty much have your project done and it's all up to what people want and what you want to be what you actually add into the application. Now I've talked a ton about the career fair application I'm working on in this video and it's something that I really want you to be a part of. So if you're interested in being a part of one of these first career fairs, I highly recommend you check out the description down below. I'm going to have a link to the site where you can sign up, enter your basic profile information, and you can be enrolled into the very next career fair that we have. And it's going to be completely for free. At least that's what I'm planning for right now. I want to make this as easy and accessible as possible. So I highly recommend you check that out. And with that said, thank you very much for watching this video.